All right, in this video we're discussing the difference between combinations and permutations. The reason why we're taking time out to talk about that is that they're often confused with one another. Let's start with the basic definitions. A combination is a subset of items drawn from a set without replacement. The order of the items in the subset is not important. That is the definition of a combination. We talk about permutations is very similar. A permutation is an arrangement of R items drawn from a set of N items without replacement. The order of the chosen R items is important. So the difference here the main difference is that the order of the items is important. So in other words, it's very similar in that you have a set of items and you're taking you know, some subset from there. But once you have that subset, when you're talking about a permutation, you're gonna count how many different ways you can arrange the items that you've selected. Whereas with a combination, you're done once you've selected them. That counts as just one combination and you're finished. With a permutation, you gotta think of all the different ways it can be scrambled up. For example, if I wanted to take three letters from the set of 26 letters in the English alphabet, the letters A, B, C count as one combination. And it doesn't matter if you scramble them up and call it B, A, C or C, B, A. That's all still just one combination because they have the same three letters. No matter how many ways you scramble them up, you're dealing with the same three letters, so it's only counted once. But with a permutation, it's different. If you have A, B, C, you would count that different from B, A, C, or count it different from C, B, A, so on and so forth. So Generally speaking, if you have two problems that are very similar to each other, except for one's a combination, one's a permutation, the permutations will be a much higher amount, right? Or a much higher number, right? Because every time you take, say, three items, you have to also consider all the ways that those items can be scrambled up. Turns out, in that case, it'll be uh, three factorial or six different ways for each of those subsets of three that are taken. So it'll be six times as large as the number of combinations. All right, so again, if you consider order important, you're generally going to have a much larger answer than if you consider order to be unimportant. Okay, so check for combinations first. That's my recommendation. If you're solving a counting problem and you come to it initially and you recognize it's a counting problem because it says something like how many, whatever, and so you think, okay, I'm supposed to count something here. I gotta use a counting technique. My recommendation is that you assume it's a combination first and then try to disprove it by answering these three questions below. But if you can't disprove that it's a combination, in other words, if you say yes to all three of these questions, then you should use the combinations formula. Why is it important to do this way? Because it's often very difficult to see why fundamental counting rule wouldn't solve the problem. Take our example just I mentioned just a minute ago. If I said I'm choosing three letters from the English alphabet, what's wrong with saying that for the first letter I have 26 options, for the second letter I have 25 options, and for the third letter I have 24 options? What's wrong with that answer in that case? Well, if I specify that the order of the letters is unimportant, it turns out that's the wrong approach to do it. But, but why? It doesn't seem obvious as to why. So I could write it out on paper and show you why there's a problem with that. But again, it's, it's still a subtle thing, right? And it's going to be very hard for you to figure out that fundamental counting rule won't solve that. So some people come into the idea with, oh, my most basic counting rule is a fundamental counting rule. I'll use that whenever I can. And then what happens is they end up applying it to a lot of situations that are really combinations. And in that case, they miss all those questions. So my approach is to tell students, hey, focus on combinations first, assume it's a combination, and then try to disprove that. If you can disprove it, then you know the fundamental counting rule should work safely. If you can't disprove it, then you need to be using combinations formula and go ahead and use that and get the problem right. Okay, so let's go over the three questions you need to ask yourself then once you recognize something is a counting problem. So the first question is, are they selecting R items from a set of N items? If you can say yes to that, then it could be a combination, right? So in other words, you're taking a subset from a set of items that meets the criteria for combinations. What's the second question? Well, it says, is the order of the selected items unimportant? So this is an important idea. The idea that the order is insignificant, right? If it turns out that the order has no practical significance for the problem you're working in, so if it's a real world example, if the order of the things being taken makes no difference in the final outcome of the problem, then order is unimportant. And again, it could be a combination. In order for it to be a combination though, you also have to say yes to this last question, which is, is the repetition of items not allowed? In other words, once something is selected, it has to be selected and can't be reselected, right? So in other words, if you're talking about um, you know, friends going on a trip with you, you're gonna take three friends with you out of a group of five friends. Once you select, say, Sally, Sally can't be used again because she can't be you know, cloned and used three times, for example. You take Sally, she's one of the members coming with you on the trip, and then she's not available for selection again. She's already been selected and she's not there anymore, right? So when you go back in, there will be no more Sally's, right? So that's the idea that repetition is not allowed in the case of combinations. If you can say yes to all three questions, it's a combination. Go ahead and use the combination formula and you'll be good. 
If not, though, you should try to use something like fundamental counting rule or one of the permutation formulas. Notice I said one of the permutation formulas. There's actually at least two major permutation formulas that we often teach in elementary stats courses. Um, here, I won't cover either of them, actually. I'll just tell you to use fundamental counting rule and solve those problems that way. The permutation formulas, generally speaking, um, make your life easier if it's a problem that has a lot of elements that you're dealing with or large sets and you're drawing a lot of items. But for most of the problems that we face, the fundamental counting rule will do it just fine. So we're going to stick to that just to keep things simple. So in our universe, it's combinations or fundamental counting rule. And that's it. You should be able to solve all the problems that you encounter in this course using those two techniques. All right, so let's try to decipher whether this is combinations or not. So does the following problem deal with combinations? I want to choose three students from a group of 55 to serve as teaching assistants. How many different groups of three students can I select? So we're not going to actually solve this, but we are going to see if we can decipher whether it's a combination or permutation, or if order is important or unimportant, are the selections with replacement, without replacement, etc. right? So let's start with the first question. Are the items being selected from a set of n items? So notice, can you say there is a certain number of items being selected from a certain number of items? Yeah, I think so. Looks like we're taking three students from a set of 55, so our r would be 3 here, our n would be 55. Seems to fit that just fine, so we'll say yes to that question. Is the order of the selected items important? Well, let's think about that. Let's say we have Abigail, Bobby, and Carlos, right? Does it really matter whether I say we have Bobby, Abigail, and Carlos serving as TAs? I mean, I could say it in a different order. It wouldn't change who's serving as TAs. It has no practical significance, right? It doesn't really matter whether I scramble up the way I say their names, right? It's still the same three people. So I would say the order is unimportant here. It makes no significant difference here, no difference at all in the overall outcome of what's happening. So it seems like the, the three students being selected is all that matters, right? Who they are, not exactly which order, which order we say their names. So I think order is unimportant here, so we could say yes, that order is unimportant, right? So the order is not important. That meets the criteria for combinations. And then finally, is repetition of items allowed? Um, so for combinations, we have to say no to that, right? Is repetition of items allowed? It has to, they have to be unallowed or not allowed. So uh, again, I think we can't repeat, right? So say I take Carlos, he's going to be one of my TAs. You know, is he going to be available again for another selection? No, because he's already there. He's, he's one of my students. I can't choose Carlos three times and say I have three TAs, right? He'd just be one person. So of course, once I've chosen him, he's not available for selection again. So at that point, I'd say, hey, uh, repetition is not allowed, right? I can't clone Carlos, even if there are other Carloses in the room, right? They're not the same Carlos. So the point is, is that that individual is unique. Once he's selected, he won't be available for selection again. So it's selection without replacement. That's the criteria for combinations. This problem should be solved with combinations then. So the answer would be 55. C3, or in other words, 55 choose 3. So you could do that in your calculator and get the solution, and you're done. And again, you know it's a combination, and you're golden, right? Again, so you want to avoid trying to solve it by saying 55 times 54 times 53. That would not be the right answer because that would assume that order is important, and it would count different rearrangements of the students as being different. Once again, you want to use that checklist to make sure it's not a combination first before you jump to use fundamental counting rule. In this case, it is a combination, so we should be using that technique.